Ball striking, ball striking, ball striking. That is how you lower your scores and lower your handicap. And you're in the right place because that's exactly what we're talking about in this video. And I'm gonna show you what are the absolutely key moves that you need to make to improve that part of your game. So if I ask you what is the difference between your game and the game of a PGA, LPGA tour professional? you could probably make a pretty big list, right? They hit the ball further, they hit the ball straighter, they put better, they chip better, all those kind of things. But their ball striking is also really, really impressive. And we can work on that in your golf swing. There are not many golfers that I see who strike the ball perfectly. It just doesn't happen. And we know that if we can strike the ball better, lots of things happen. You get more distance, you get more consistency, you hit straighter shots, you'll have shorter putts. So all the other areas of the game get better just because you're striking the ball well. And in this video, we're gonna talk about one of the absolutely key moves that you need to make, which all the best players make, which sometimes you are missing in your game. I see it all the time, but it can really change the way that you think about impact. It can really influence your ball striking in a positive way. Like I said, we're talking about one element here. If you wanna go through a really full training course, to look at every club in the bag. There is one on my website now, Ultimate Ball Striking. I'll link that in the corner. I'll link it down in the description box as well. I'd love you to go and check it out. I really believe that can transform your whole game and it looks at so many different elements. Now it is just starting to rain. We're gonna push through. Hopefully it doesn't uh, get worse. It can blow over. So what is, this, what is this movement that we're talking about and why is it so important? Well, it's actually nothing to do with the golf club. Yes, we wanna hit the ball at the center of the golf club and that's really our ultimate goal but we're actually not gonna talk about the golf club in this video. We're gonna talk about what the body does. Uh, like I said, it's almost a missing piece. Let's get rid of the golf club to begin with. If I just stood up normally, when we take an address to the golf ball, we tip forwards. We're gonna call that bend or forward bend. We bend forward so we can get down to the golf ball that's on the ground. Now, when I make my backswing and I, let's say, come into my downswing, it's pretty obvious that that forward bend is still there. You know, it looks, not exactly, but it looks fairly similar to where I was at address. There's going to be a little bit of different movements, but it's still present. Now, what about if we turn to the face on camera and we look to the end position of my golf swing, or not even the end position, let's look at kind of halfway towards the end position. So let's say I'm here in my follow through. Well, again, I think you can clearly see that forward bend is certainly not there. It's almost the opposite. You know, if this was my neutral position, this was what we said was forward bend. If anything, I'm slightly more the other way. Now, let's say the golf club is around about chest height and the check point we had on the downswing, again, we'll say that the golf club was about chest height. So between here and here, our body is going from a forward bend position to what we will call, we could call it backwards bend, we'll call it extension. So when's that happening? Well, it's happening kind of through that impact area. So. How many times have you seen a golfer, and well, I've certainly seen a number of these over the, the, the years I've been coaching, who will actually achieve in their downswing a really nice position. And everything looks pretty good. You know, we've got everything organized in terms of what the body's doing, the hands and arms and club are in a perfect position. And we're looking at that and we're thinking, that's fantastic. This golfer's got everything they need to hit a great shot. And then from here, we often see something like this. Clearly I've dead top that. Look at how cramped the arms look. Look at what the body looks like. It doesn't look particularly comfortable and I'm really gonna struggle from there. Now, what happens when we hit that shot? We top it, we kind of know what's happened. We hit the top of the ball. So instinctively we think, what did I do? I must have lifted up. I must have either looked up or lifted up. So on the next swing, what do we do? We keep ahead and we stay down. That makes it worse. So that's why we often see these golfers who achieve this fantastic position here, but then through the ball, their body isn't going from flexion to extension. It's not doing that, it's missing that element. And what happens then is your arms are traveling at a good amount of speed. You know, they've got some speed there as well as the club head. And when your arms have got some speed and you're trying to keep your head down, your body down, Either your arms are going to end up stopping, probably not going to do that because they've got to reach the ball, or they've got nowhere to go and so the elbows separate. And when the elbows separate, what happens to the golf club? It gets pulled into your body and you end up topping the golf ball. 
So the more that you keep your head down, the more that you keep your chest down, the more that you try to stay down, the more that the arms get pulled into the body and we get this really uncomfortable position in the follow through. We need to avoid that. We need to go from flexion to extension and that is the movement which is absolutely key. All the best players do it, different amounts, but they all do it. And that is going to allow you, which is really important, it's going to allow you to keep your arms extended and that's what's going to help you strike the golf ball. A really key point here, if I go into my forward bend, my flex position, and if we just look from that front on camera, look at the height of my head as I'm going from this forward bend to my extended position. Look at the height of the head. Did it go up? No, it didn't go up, did it? It stayed. So when we're extending, we're not doing this because that would cause you to have some issues. But what's happening is we're rotating our body as we are trying to extend our body. And what's happening, that is what's going to allow me to get my extended position on the way through. As I said, it's something that all the best golfers do, and it's something that rarely is present or rarely done well enough in the golfers who really struggle with ball striking, and that may be you. Simple little exercise. I love this little exercise to help you really feel and sense what should be happening. Take an alignment stick, place it into the ground at a relatively and relatively close to 45 degree angle. It doesn't really matter, it's not exact. You're gonna take a couple of T's and you're gonna place those T's underneath your arms. Now obviously you don't need T's, they're just there for a bit of awareness. You can just tuck your shirt under there or wherever it may be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna take my address and I'm gonna hold this stick. Now what we're gonna try and get you to do is we're gonna try and get you to go from here into a follow through position. I'm just gonna remove those for a moment so I can demonstrate this into a follow-through position. But I need to obviously remove this stick from the ground. So which way have I got to remove it? Well, I need to kind of pull it in this direction because it's stuck in the ground. So instinctively, if I ask you to pull that stick out the ground, what you might do is you might do that with your arms. If that's what you feel that you do instinctively, that should set those alarm bells ringing that this is something you need to work on in your golf swing. This is something you don't do as well as you could. But if that alarm bell does start to ring, it's a positive because you've got some movements in there which could unlock some really good ball striking for you and probably some distance as well. So instinctively, yes, you might want to use your arms. We're not going to use our arms because we're going to have those T-pegs in place. If those T-pegs are in place, what I really need to do is start to use my body and I need to start to extend. If I extend like this, what's my arm doing? It's going up pretty much in the direction of that stick. That's gonna help me pull the stick out of the ground. So if I want to pull the stick out the ground, I'm going to need to push off the ground, I'm going to need to extend, and then from there, I can then allow my arms to fold into their follow through position. So if I try and achieve this nice end position and pull the stick out the ground with as much force as I kind of can, it's really gonna help us go from forward bend into our end position. So what we're gonna do, take an address, forward bend and we're going to move into the end position through rotation and extension. And hopefully you can see there, as soon as I started to pull that stick, there was a push up and away from the ground. That's caused my body to extend. Like we said a moment ago, all the best players do that. I love that drill. It's fantastic. Something you can do at home or anywhere where you've got a bit of room really. It's just a really good sort of idea or way of creating the right ideas in your mind. It's still raining, but uh, we'll continue anyway. So how do we take that through to a golf ball? Well, we're gonna take kind of do what we call a transition drill. That was the phase one. This is how we start to build it into our goal swing. You're gonna take an address to a mid iron. I've got myself a six iron here. You're going to load your left side. It doesn't matter too much in this exercise. If the head goes a little forward, hands are gonna go a little forward. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a little backswing, but pretty much try and keep the weight on that lead side. Now from here, if I swung the club down and extended my arms, the club's gonna collide into the ground. We kind of want that because we do need to hit the ground with the irons. But what I want you to try and feel is that to move the club a little bit away from the ground, you're gonna to start to move into extension. If the timing is right, your club will hit the ground, but it won't be too much because it's being balanced out by the body movement. What I don't want you to do is balance that out, this downward out by flexing the arms, that's the, the big no-no, and that's what, again, we might see more often. So, these shots that I hit here should go relatively low. With any look, they'll go straight. But we're looking to just hold that finish 
so we can see where things were. So there's my address, load the left side, little backswing, and then extend with the body. Okay, a little bit left, but strike was good. I did everything I wanted to and I've hit the ground. So we can see where I am in my end position, hugely extended, arms are straight. I struck the ball well. And the key thing was, I was able to keep my arms straight as I went from flexion, added rotation and went towards extension. It's a great exercise. And I said, that's the kind of stage two. Let me get another ball. So we've got what we call the dry drill. Dry drill is kind of no club, no ball. That's phase one to when you understand the movement. Phase two is to have a club and a ball, have a transition drill. And then ultimately, you want to use those feelings that you've had and transfer them to a golf swing. So you need to make sure that through the golf ball, the feeling is that your belt buckle is getting further from the ground, it's getting more towards the target, and it's starting to face the target. That's a great way for you to feel all those movements in, in one. So notice how the belt buckle from here is going to go up, forwards, and around. If we can do that, it's effectively going to create the space for you to have your arms extended and ultimately have that ball coming more at the centre of the golf club, which is kind of what we want in this video. So don't stay down on the golf ball. It's the worst thing that you can do. We need to have this movement of extension in there to really enable us to consistently hit the ball from the center. There's the strike I want. There's the extended position. And I still took a divot after the golf ball. So I certainly wasn't lifting away from the golf ball. I wasn't lifting my head, but I was certainly extending my body. And that's really, really important. So that's a movement which is present in pretty much all the best golf swings. But certainly the golfers that I see who come in struggling with ball striking, it's often the bit that they're missing. They're often doing lots of things that are great here, but then they're just not doing the right kind of thing through the golf ball. Those three little exercises or two exercises and taking it to the golf swing can help you add that to your golf swing. And I really believe that's going to unlock some better golf for you. Right, we managed to get through the video without it raining. So uh, thankfully for that. Thank you for watching. Use your stuff is down below. Comments box, like button. I uh, would love you to subscribe to the channel as well. There's a link up in the corner here. There's one in the description box as well. I really believe these videos can you know, help you understand your golfing better, help you get the most out of your golfing, and ultimately help you perform better out on the course where it really matters. Thanks for watching.